Hi class, welcome to Statistics for Management course. Hope you enjoy the class. So what we have today, we have chapter 5, Statistical Analysis for Means. This is a new chapter. So what we have in the content, we have 5.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, and 0.5. Okay, this chapter 5, we will divide it by three parts, part A, part B, and part C. So part A is all about the confidence interval. So what is confidence interval? Before we go into the deep the confidence interval, there are several terminologies that you need to understand. So what are the terms? The terms are estimate, estimator, and estimation. So what is estimate? Estimate, anggaran, and approximate calculation or judgment of the value. Kita anggarkan sesuatu nilai. And in statistics, sample is used to estimate the population. Sample digunakan untuk anggarkan nilai populasi. So, what is estimator? Penganggar. Estimator is a statistic that estimate the parameter. And estimation process. Penganggaran. Estimation is the entire process of using an estimator to produce an estimate of the parameter. In estimation, there are two type of estimation. First one is point estimation. Kita anggarkan pada satu titik. And the other one is interval estimation. Kita membuat penganggaran dalam beberapa selang. Okay. Properties of good point estimator. The estimator must be unbiased, consistency, efficiency and sufficient. So now, what is confidence interval? So before we go into the confidence interval, I will illustrate to you the estimate, estimator and estimation. Now, I will explain to you estimate, estimator and estimation. Okay, let's say I want to estimate the population mean height of all UMP students. Saya nak anggarkan purata ketinggian semua pelajar UMP. So what I have here is I have the total population of all UMP students. So this one is the population all UMP students denoted by capital N. So what I do is I take a sample which is my sample is student from FIM. What did I do is I calculate the sample mean height of students from FIM. So the sample mean height denoted by X bar. So, I want to estimate the population mean height all UMP student. So, I want to estimate this mu. So, I will use this x bar to estimate this mu. So, this x bar, we call it as estimator. So, how about the entire process here? So, this entire process here, we call it as estimation. So, as stated in the slide just now, there are two types of estimation. The first one is point estimation and the other one is interval estimation. Point estimation, kita anggarkan menggunakan satu titik. For example, I want to estimate mu using x bar. Let's say my x bar is equals to 1.4. So, this 1.4 is the estimation of this mu. So, this mu is equals to 1.4 at only one point. How about interval estimation? When we talk about interval, we will have range of value. Kita akan ada beberapa nilai which is negative infinity until infinity. Why? Because of we will get continuous data. Okay, let's say I estimate my mu in between 10.5 until 12.6 so what does it mean this mu can be any values between 10.6 10.7 until 12.5 so it can be any value in this interval so this is interval estimation from the definition of interval estimation penganggaran menggunakan selang we will have what we call it as confidence interval, selang keyakinan.
What is confidence interval? Confidence interval is the estimated range of value which contains the value of the parameter. Selang yang mempunyai nilai parameter yang kita estimate. Right. Normally, we will write down confidence interval open bracket A is a value B is a value and then close bracket or A less than mu less than B ok, in this interval number 2 confidence limit sempadan keyakinan is the end point of a confidence interval if you write down your confidence interval A, B A will be the lower boundary and B will be the upper boundary sempadan atas dan sempadan bawah so these two we call it as confidence limit number 3 interval width interval width is equals to the upper boundary minus lower boundary so width is equals to B minus A so width can determine how precise or how accurate your estimation. The smaller the width, the interval estimate is more accurate and precise. So we want to be our width is smaller. Number four, confidence level. Confidence level is the percentage of probability that contain the parameter in the interval A, B. Berapa persen kita anggarkan the yang parameter itu berada dalam selang A, B. And normally the confidence level used is 90%, 95% and 99%. And the commonly used is 95%. For example, Mu is in between 10.5 and 10.9. So, I said that 95% the mu will be in this interval. Okay, number 5. Significant level denoted by alpha. Significant level is the percentage of probability that do not contain the parameter. It's the opposite of the confidence level. And normally, we will use 1%, 5%, and 10%. Okay. How to calculate confidence level? So, to calculate the confidence level, we will have the formula. Confidence level is equal to the probability 1 minus alpha times 100 percent okay for example alpha is 5 percent so it will be 0 0.05 so confidence level 1 minus 0 0.05 times 100 percent we will get 95%. Okay. Another example. Given to you, confidence level is 90%. What is the significant level? So, 1 minus alpha times 1% equals to 90%. So, 1 minus alpha equals to 0.9%. Alpha equals to 0 0.1. Okay, this is how we calculate the alpha. Right, the illustration here. We have a normal distribution for continuous data. We have boundary here. Here is your upper boundary. Here is your lower boundary. In the middle here is the 95% percentage that contain the parameter. And how about this one? This one is the error alpha that do not contain the parameter. So because of we have two boundary, so alpha divided by 
two. Okay, last number six estimation error. In estimation, there's always been error. Tak semestinya apa yang kita agarkan itu adalah tepat. So mesti ada error. So probability x bar minus error less than mu less than x bar plus error equals to one minus alpha. Means that we have to minus error for the lower boundary and we have to plus error for the upper boundary. This one is lower boundary. This one is upper boundary. So, how do we calculate the error? E is the margin of error. Also, margin of error. So, width is equals to B minus A. So, here B is X bar plus E minus a x bar minus e expand the equation you will get equals to 2 e so this is what we got with is equals to 2 times error also equals to b minus a so you have to remember this formula Okay, let's get back to okay, the based on the explanation just now. We have confidence interval. The definition is the estimated range of values. And then we have the confidence limit, which is the lower boundary and upper boundary, the end points. And then we have the interval width, B minus A, upper boundary minus lower boundary. The smaller your interval width, better your confidence interval. Discard the parameter and then your estimation is precise and accurate. Okay, then you will have confidence level, the percentage of probability that contain the parameter, and then we have level of significance denoted by alpha, which is the percentage of error, and then this illustration, and then the estimation error, interval we equals to 2 times the estimation error, and in confidence interval, we also have one sided lower bound and one sided upper bound. So now, that's it for the introduction of confidence interval. We will go to the example and exercise of estimation using confidence interval.